So welcome back. Let's take a look at SSH keys. So when you access another computer, you probably use a password. We use passwords all the time. Lots of websites have them. But for a, from a security perspective, they are horrible. For most of you, your password probably contains 1234 or 5678, unless you're a systems administrator, in which case your password is probably just God. But they're really easy to crack. There's a lot of websites you can go to that have lists of passwords. And especially in light of some of the big breaches of websites around the world, there's just common lists where people have taken all the passwords and figured out what people use frequently. So there's a much better, much more secure alternative to using passwords that's much safer. And it's called using SSH keys. It's a little bit of a tricky concept. But in practice, it's really quite simple. And once you get it up and running, it's really easy to use SSH keys because you don't have to remember any password. The concept of SSH keys is that there are two files that we're going to use. There's a private key, and a public key. Now, as the name suggests, you can do different things with the different keys. The private key is super secret. Because if I get access to your private key, I can pretend I'm you. So the private key, you've got to take real care of. You shouldn't share it with people. You shouldn't put it anywhere public, like on a website or anything like that. You should really make sure that you know exactly where it is. The public key, as, it, as its name suggests, is public. It doesn't matter where it is. You can put it anywhere. You can do anything with it. You can post it on websites. You can email it to people. You can put it on remote servers you don't trust. It really doesn't matter. Because the public key can only do so much. You need the private key to pretend to be you. So the way that this works is that we have two different computers. We have, let's say, here's your laptop. And here's the little mouse. And we have a server that we're going to connect to. And our server is a big server that sits in a rack with lots and lots and lots of machines and lots of memory and lots of blinking lights. The blinking lights are the most important thing for any server to have. And so we've got lots of blinking lights in our server. Okay. So we want to access the server from our laptop or our desktop machine. The way that we do this is that we use keys. So we make sure that our private key is on our private machine, on our laptop, on our desktop, only on one machine. We have access to that machine. Nobody else does. We make sure that it's safe. The public key, of course, can be anywhere. So we put the public key on the server. Okay? And we use SSH to make the connection. And we say to SSH, I want to connect to this server, and I'm going to use the private key. So SSH reads the private key and says to the server, I want to connect to you, but I want to use the public key equivalent of the private key. These two files are related. The public key is, can be calculated straight away from the private key, but not vice versa. So the server says, OK, yes, I've got that public key. It generates a random string of characters and letters and numbers and makes a random string. And it uses an algorithm to encrypt that random string using this public key. The only way you can decrypt that, that random string is by using the private key. You can't decrypt it using the public key because it's a one-way encryption. You have to have the private key to decrypt it. So the server says, great, you want to access me using this key. Here's the random string. Here's the random string. 
decrypt it and prove that you've decrypted it. So your laptop takes that string, decrypts it, does a little calculation on the string, doesn't actually send the exact string back, but does a calculation on the string that proves that it really did decrypt it and sends that calculation back to the server. If your laptop got the right string on the decryption, the server says, okay, cool. You've obviously got the private key. You can come in and do work. If, on the other hand, your server has the wrong key, then it won't get the calculation right, and the server will say, sorry, you're not allowed in. You don't have access. You don't have the private key. So the key to keys is that you have two files, your private key and your public key. The public key can go anywhere, can be on anything. The private key belongs to you and you alone, and you shouldn't share it with anybody. Now, in the computational genomics class, we're using Amazon Web Services, and Amazon Web Services uses a PEM file for its private key. So that file is super secret, and you shouldn't share it with anybody because it would allow them to access your machines. The server already has the public key because it creates it from the PEM file before it gives it to you. If you want to create your own public keys, you can place them on Amazon and use that as well. And then they get placed into the server when your Amazon Web instance gets booted up. Now you can log in from any machine using the private key, and you don't need a password. It means that Amazon Web Services is protected because there's no password, so you couldn't have set a simple password like Bob. And it means that you're protected because only you can get in if you have that private key. So the last part about using SSH keys is that to access the remote server from your private laptop, you need some software that's going to run SSH. And that depends on the computer that you're using. So if you're using a Mac computer with OS X, then you can use the application terminal that's provided in the utilities folder in your applications folder. If you're using Linux, then I've no doubt you already know exactly how to do this. And again, you're just going to use terminal. In both of these cases, you open a terminal and you type SSH, and it will connect to the machine. If you're using Windows, then there are several applications that you can use to connect via SSH. One that I quite like is Putty that I use quite a bit. Um, and there are some other applications that are included in the course material. Now, one word of caution, if you're downloading applications, especially for Windows, make sure that you're very careful about where you download the application from. There's a couple of fake Putty programs that have been circulating where instead of connecting to the server, what it does is it reads your private key and then sends it to somebody else. And remember, your private key is private. And so we don't want to send it to anybody else because that means they can access your server. If you go for PuTTY, if you go to HTTP PuTTY.org, you can find the, down the latest version to download. There's only one other thing you need to know to access your um, AMI instances on Amazon Web Services. We've got SSH, we've got our private keys, we've got our applications that we're going to use. And then the final thing we need to know is our username. And for the Amazon instances that we're using, we're going to log in as user EC2-user. Okay. EC2-user, and that's our username. We don't need a password because we've got our keys. Now, with all of this, 
you can connect to your Amazon instance that you've just booted up. Good luck.